The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus passed through towns and villages, teaching as he went and making his way to Jerusalem. Someone asked him, Lord, will only a few people be saved? He answered them, Strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. After the master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then will you stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. He will say to you in reply, I do not know where you are from. And you will say, we ate and drank in your company and you taught in our streets. Then he will say to you, I do not know where you are from. Depart from me, all you evildoers. And there will be wailing and grinding of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves cast out. And people will come from the east and the west, and from the north and the south, and will recline at table in the kingdom of God. For behold, some are last who will be first, and some are first who will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. The image of the narrow gate in today's gospel gives the impression that it's difficult to get into heaven or to gain God's love and mercy. There is this passageway or this gate or a door that's hard to get through. And moreover, he makes it tough for us to pass through it. But that's not what Jesus is saying here. He's speaking to the religious leaders as well as the crowds And what he is telling them is that acceptance of and faith in him as the promised Messiah is the gate to heaven and to God's love. That is, he is the gate. As Jesus was traveling toward Jerusalem, preaching the kingdom of God, healing the sick, and casting out demons, a debate arose among Pharisees, scribes, and some of the people as to whether or not Jesus really was the promised Messiah that is, the way to God the Father and to salvation. Opposition began to grow. Some people turned away and abandoned him. So Jesus says, look, I am the gate to the Father's love. He has sent me to you, and I have come to invite you and all people into God's love. So the narrow gate is not an actual gate or door or some elusive passage we must search for, it is Jesus himself. Faith and belief in him is the passage to love and life. That Jesus is the gate to God's love and eternal life is stated in many places throughout the scriptures. In the Gospel of John, we hear Jesus say, I am the gate, the good shepherd. Whoever enters through me will be saved. Elsewhere in John, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And in Matthew's gospel, he says, Come to me, all who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. Now, if Jesus is the gate to God's love and eternal life and his burden is light, What does he mean by calling it a narrow gate that we must pass through? That makes us nervous, I think, a little bit, doesn't it? A narrow gate? If Jesus is the way, if God is love, why call the way to him narrow? Well, this reminds me of my many years of ministry in Holy Cross in East Africa. We got to come home for leave, home leave, about once every two to two and a half years. And I remember when I'd come home, arriving at O'Hare Airport, and my family lived in Chicago, so they could come and greet me when I landed. And you know, you do go through passport control lines and squished into narrower gates, 
and you go through customs and then walk out with crowds to that door that's a um, little wider but not much. And there they were, they were always standing there, my mother, my father when he was alive, my sister when she was in town with her children and her husband, with arms out, waiting for me, smiles on their face, and well, ready to greet me with an embrace and welcome me home, tell me how much they missed me and how glad they are to have me at home. It's a wonderful way to arrive. I didn't have to kind of arrive on my own and find my way home. They were always there with an embrace for me. Well, Jesus, the narrow gate, is like the welcome home of a loving embrace. Huh? Jesus, the narrow gate, is like a welcome home of a loving embrace. The narrow gate is this. It's this. Jesus, standing there before you with his arms open, inviting you to enter his warm and loving embrace. This is the narrow gate, from his right arm to his left arm, his arms open and reaching out to embrace you, inviting you to come into that embrace, close to his heart. This is the narrow gate, and it's an open gate, not a closed gate. We don't need to fear this narrow gate, it's an invitation to love, to mercy, and to friendship with God. You know, right outside the basilica here in this quad, which is called God Quad, there's a statue of Jesus, the Sacred Heart, with his arms open. And on the pedestal it says, come to me, everybody. It's an invitation. And it reminds me of uh, many students have reflected and shared how important that's been to them at times in their life. I remember one person in particular, he was struggling with prayer in his life and wondering where God was and th seems, see, uh, things seemed to be difficult. And so he was wandering around campus and came to the front of that statue and looked up and as he was looking at that and starting to share with God, he envisioned Jesus with his open arms in that statue, inviting him to come into his embrace to experience his love and presence in his life and whatever he was going through. And it was a powerful and changing experience for him. Jesus' Jesus's open arms are that narrow gate, an invitation to all of us to enter his loving embrace and to know personally, to know personally of his love and mercy in our life. Well, these arms are always open for us, even when, or especially when, I think, we are struggling in any way in our life. God does not want us to bear our crosses, our struggles, and our sinfulness, even our sinfulness alone. Strive to enter through the narrow gate, Jesus says, for many, I tell you, will attempt to enter, but will not be strong enough. Will not be strong enough means that we cannot do it on our own efforts apart from God. We need God's help. We need God's embrace. We need God's love and mercy to carry us through this life to the next. God never intended us to live alone. God at times does allow us to endure difficulties that arise from us doing it alone hoping we will come to our senses and realize that we cannot do it alone. And this is what is meant by God disciplining us in the second reading we heard from the letter to the Hebrews. He lets us struggle on our own when we turn from his love and embrace, hoping that we'll realize it is not working and return to his, his loving embrace. And that reminds me of a friend who had a rough meeting at a board meeting one time at work. And after the meeting, he was walking with one of his colleagues that was at that meeting, and she said, well, how do you think the meeting went? And he said, not very well. And so she asked him, well, what might have you done different? And he said, you know, this is who I am. I say it like it is, even if it's not popular. And she paused, and then she asked him, well, how does that work for you? That's not a bad question, is it? And we might ask ourselves that question sometimes. When we are struggling with life, faith, or suffering of any kind, and God seems absent, it often means that we have turned away from his loving embrace. 
We are trying to do it alone. At those times, we need God's love the most, don't we? And so we might ask ourselves, am I trying it alone without God? And how is that working for me? You know, am I trying it alone without God? How is that working for me? Think about a cell phone. We regularly need to plug in to charge the battery of a cell phone. And as soon as you unplug it, the power begins to drop. That little symbol up there starts shrinking. We only have a lot, so long to use the phone before it needs recharging or it just quits, right? Well, I don't want to reduce the loving embrace of Jesus to a cell phone battery. I'm not that much into electronics. But the analogy can help. If we don't stay plugged into the unconditional love of God, we lose the focus and meaning of our life. And life then can become very difficult. You know, when we're not plugged in regularly to God's unconditional love and embrace in our life, we lose its meaning and focus, and then everything becomes confused. Lastly, Jesus says, after a master of the house has arisen and locked the door, then will you stand outside knocking and saying, Lord, open the door for us. Entering into the open arms of Jesus, the narrow gate, is not an invitation for the end of life only, an image we hope to encounter when we reach the pearly gates upon our death. Jesus invites us to experience his loving embrace and friendship every moment of our life here on earth. The famous Saint Augustine wrote in his autobiography in the fourth century, he wrote, Late have I loved you, O beauty ever ancient, ever new. Late have I loved you. I plunged into the lovely things which you created. You were with me, but I was not with you. You dispelled my blindness. I have tasted you. Now I long for more. When St. Augustine turns to Jesus in midlife, he regrets having not known the love and companionship of God in the first half of his life. Jesus does not want us to go through life having regrets of not experiencing his loving embrace. He doesn't want us to wait to the end of life for it either. He stands before you right now with his arms open, hoping you will walk into them. He is the host of this Eucharistic banquet. He wants you to know that he is with you in your joys and sorrows. Augustine regretted not knowing Jesus' presence in both the joys and sorrows of his earlier life. But Jesus increased the consolation of his joy in the second half of his life and softened the suffering and struggles by his loving presence. Jesus wants to do the same for you, each one of you. Why wait? If you don't know how to enter into the experience of the loving embrace of Jesus, go out and contemplate the statue of the Sacred Heart with Jesus' arms open, welcoming you. It's worked for many others on this campus. It says in Latin, come to me, everyone, come. He wants to share your joys with you so he can increase their consolation. He wants to share your sorrows with you so that you know you are not alone and so that he can strengthen you with his love, his mercy, and his friendship. Don't wait like Augustine did. <laughs>